Welcome to the Lara Jane Layton Show. This podcast is for you, the person who keeps putting others first. Your self-talk has held you back. You no longer need to take a second seat. Let's explore ways to overcome self-doubt. You can silence that inner bully voice and achieve your full potential. Here's your host, Lara Jane. Hello, listener. It's Lara Jane. And today we're going to talk about saying yes or no. How often are you asked to do something that you in your body and mind and soul think, oh my gosh, I do not want to do this. And we still answer yes. I don't know how many times I've done this, but I used to be a yes person and I would do whatever I was asked to do. But I think when as we start to be more authentic with ourselves, we start learning ways of saying no and not being rude. I think sometimes we say yes because we don't want to hurt someone's feelings or we don't want to let them down. But you can confidently choose your response based on what you want. And there's so many ways of doing this. And my mom is pretty good at muscle testing. I don't know if you have experienced or know anything about muscle testing, but she will ask it almost, well, I shouldn't say everything, but any large decision she needs to make, she will muscle test and find out, is this good for me? Is this good for my soul? Is this what I need to do for my progression? And get that answer from her body. I'm not as good at that. (laughs) I go with that emotional response of, oh, that sounds fun. And then 10 minutes later, I'm going, why in the heck did I say yes? I have got other priorities on my plate. And so one of the things that we need to do in order to stay consistent and know our answers is number one, know your priorities first. Really know what it is that you want to do. What are the things that you choose for you in your progression? And then answer appropriately. And if you still don't know, because both of them are a super high priority, like friends and family are my top priority after me. And if they conflict, it's got two family members, and what do I do? then we need to start going out, what are our additional priorities? What are the other things that make me tick? And how does it feel in my body? If you don't muscle test, and this isn't about muscle testing, but if you don't do it, there are other ways you can feel it in your body. And as some people call it that full body yes, or that full body no. And if it's not a full body yes, it's a no. And so it's really, how are you asking the question and how are you choosing to show up? Um, Saying no is not being selfish. Saying no is not being rude. Saying no is being authentic to who you are and who you and your path and your direction. And there's not a soul on this earth or previously on this earth or pre or in the future on this earth that is just like you. There is unique everything, our unique family situations, our unique locations that we work, our unique locations that we live, our unique friends. There is nobody that has the same combination. So nobody else can answer it for you. So is it a yes? Or is it a no? I think the one that's hard for me is when I change my mind. Oh my gosh, I hate changing my mind. But sometimes I will say yes. And hours later, it's like, you know what? I don't want to do that. That does not fit in my time frame. That does not fit in my life. And I hate changing my mind. You know, the funny thing is, is we laugh. Well, I shouldn't say we, because I don't do it and you might not, but the media tries to prove that our politicians and our leaders are just wishy-washy because they're changed their mind. 
will you tell me, are you 100% the same as you were five years ago? Do you have the same desires, the same outcomes, the same things that you're working on? No, we change. You know, whether it's our, I, I don't want to go into all the different political things that that have changed over the years, but we do swing right and left and right and left. And are either of them right or wrong? I think they're just a different balance for different people on different paths. And so how do we learn to accept the environment around us and that it is still helping us to be our own best self? And as we learn this simple, okay, it's not simple. As we learn to choose our responses to other people's requests, we start being more authentic. So really digging deep down inside, digging deep down into where does that, where do I feel this? Like I will get so excited to spend time with some people. And then um, out of the blue, I will get this migraine headache, put me down, put me in the dark for several hours, and I'm I'm not worth being outside the house after that. And so you end up not going. And then we start worrying about our reputation. Is my reputation that I'm always canceling? Does my reputation, you know, we start second guessing it. But when we start worrying so much about what the other person thinks about our response, the more stress it's going to give you. So really, how do we become our own best friend and second guessing our responses or second guessing a change to a response is a bully voice. And we want to figure out a way to quit second guessing ourselves and become a friendly voice. So it's like if somebody called you and said, oh, my child just um, had a car accident and I can't show up. Do you think, oh my gosh, they're changing their mind all the time. They're just wishy-washy. No, you as a friend are compassionate to the situation that they're in and you understand. And to become your own best friend is to figure out how to support yourself the same way you would support that best friend. And I love doing things with my friends. I love doing things with my friends. We just had a craft day and it was like so much fun to hang out with a handful of people that have been close to me for four or five years. Um, you know, over the years, your tribe will change. As you grow, you will attract new people and they're going to be those few special people that change with you and you get to keep for long term. But if someone drops out of your life, it doesn't make you a bad person. If someone all of a sudden can't handle being around you, maybe your energy has just gotten too positive and it makes them uncomfortable because they're not there yet. And that's okay. It's okay to grow apart. I, I, it's just this, if you would do it for your friend, you need to do it for you. So if you find yourself getting all excited about an event and then you get home and realize this isn't going to work, it's okay to change your mind. It's also okay to step back, leave early, be late. And not that I am condoning always being late. It depends on what you're going to. Sure, it's a concert. You're going to miss most of it because it's going to start on time. There are things that are going to start without you. That's the way it's supposed to be. You are here for your timing. You are here for you. And I don't know if you've ever seen my logo. It's a W and an M, like the M's on the bottom, the W's on top, and then there's E's off to the side. What it symbolizes to me as I build my strong foundation of me so we can support more as we are stronger, as you great grow, gain your own strength, you 
radiate and shine and give strength to the rest of the people around you. And whether you're physically in their presence because you said yes and showed up, or because you're missing it because you said no, you had other priorities during that time frame, it all works out. All is just amazing. Okay, I'm wishy-washy and a little bit on the positive side, but I really, really feel that no matter what the situation is, it is exactly right for you right now. And if you're struggling right now and you feel lost and alone, what are you learning? What are you gaining? Because sometimes lost and alone helps us broaden our perspective to branch out to new people or to new ways or to be totally confident in your own body. As long as you start learning to appreciate it, and evaluate and love the things that are going on in your life as a friend would for you, you're going to get stronger. But the second you start becoming that bully and second guessing everything you're as, you're not worthy, you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you don't know what you're doing, nobody's going to like you, nobody's... Those are bullies in your head. And our whole mission of this podcast and my coaching is to help you take those words that limit you and change them into words and thought processes that help propel you. And so don't let the negativity build up. Let it off little bits at a time. It's it's okay. I get frustrated. I have my down days. I have the days that I just cannot face another person because I am mending inside. And as I mend, I find I have more and more energy for others, more and more energy to do the things that I think are going to help build a great foundation to help radiate and support the rest of the we. Say yes when you mean yes. Say no when you mean no. And if you don't know, it's okay to wait and think about it. I think that sounds fun, but I've got to look at what my priorities are and see what else is on my plate, and I'll let you know if I can show up. Would you be offended if someone said that to you? I wouldn't. I would be very respectful. I'd be respecting that they understood where they were. So when someone calls and cancels a date or a get-together with me because they had an emergency, it's okay. I would want anybody to do that for me. If I cancel because I'm not feeling well, I sure, I think that they think I'm a flake, but they don't. They're my friends and they understand. So let your true intentions guide you in your actions, and you will be so much more content in the long run. That doesn't mean the hard times are going to go away. It just means you're going to get stronger from them. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a mental professional. I just have gone through a lot of crap in my life, and I have learned to have gratitude for the things that have made me stronger, for the things that have helped me progress. And I want to help you feel more gratitude towards every situation. And yes, you can say, well, what about the child rapist or that that gets raped? Or what about the person who gets mugged and beat up and is in the hospital? How do you justify that? I don't. But I do know that there's something in there that each and every person is learning from. And what I want you to do is pay close attention and learn the right lesson. Because when I almost got raped and then felt like I was too ugly for a rapist, that was the wrong reaction. Instead of being grateful that the universe had my back and protected me in a moment when I couldn't protect myself. And that is where we need to be. That gratitude 
for the situations that have happened to us so that we have the ability to truly focus on our authentic answers and move forward through everything. Stay tuned for the next episode. I look forward to talking to you then. Are you tired of waking up exhausted? You are not alone. If you're looking to take your life back, let's start with the simple step of adjusting your self-talk. Stay tuned for the next episode with your host, Lara Jane. Remember to follow the show so you don't miss a next simple step that you can use to feel more confident. And please leave an honest review.